Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. Today I am excited because I had a comment about my fountain pens, in particular my fountain pens from Franklin Kristoff. And so here we go. We're going to be talking about my Franklin Kristoff fountain pens, some of my thoughts, the reasons why I bought the ones that I bought and why I really do enjoy Franklin Kristoff. So to get started, I am going to also share with you the inks that I am inking up. And to be honest, I've inked up way more fountain pens at one time than I ever have like all in one sitting. And I've been working on getting them all inked up so I can show you how they write. I think one of the really nice things about Franklin Kristoff is that all the things that they do is in-house and they even have custom nib grinds that you can select from, which is rare. Not many companies do that. So they have the custom nib grinds, they have some very interesting models, and they have uh, pretty reasonable prices in comparison to the bigger picture of fountain pens and what you can get from one company. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. Franklin Kristoff fountain pens. I initially got Franklin Kristoff at towards the beginning of my fountain pen journey and they have been pretty uh like a pretty stable fountain pen company for me meaning that I typically will buy one almost every year. I'm going to pull out my drawer And you can see here that in this drawer, I have all my Franklin Kristoff. This is the bottom drawer I have. And I'm going to try to go in this order. The last three are not Franklin Kristoff. Um, so I can move these out of the way. But these are my Franklin Kristoff fountain pens. And they are pretty different. You could see here a size comparison. We are definitely going to be starting off with the smallest Franklin Kristoff fountain pen, and then move our, our way up to one of the one of the largest, not the largest, but one of the largest fountain pens. So let's get started. I am going to be doing my writing samples in this B6 notebook. So after I did that last video on my notebook covers, I decided to do some journaling in the B6 right away as much as I tried to not do it, <laughs> try to stop myself. I felt like eh, it would be nice to have a super personal journal and um, super personal being all about myself. Um, I do have other journals that are about my family and myself, but I don't have anything where it's just really strictly my thoughts to myself that I may not necessarily want um, even family members to read. So that's what this is. I'm glad I'm using it because it has kind of cleared my mind of things that um, has been kind of clogging my brain. Franklin Kristoff is a unique fountain pen brand. They are U.S. made and you can find them in um, North Carolina, in Raleigh, Raleigh. Um, and they, what's really unique is that they have a very simple design that is that they want to use to stand the test of time. So my very first Franklin Kristoff pen was this one. This is one of their smaller pens. I didn't realize how small this pen was. So it's, uh, their design is very unique, really sleek and simple. They have their logo on the top of their pens and they have the it's like a print of the initials of Franklin Kristoff and then also the four diamonds 
And then they also have Franklin Christoph kind of um, etched in on the cap. And uh, many, if not majority of their fountain pens can be eyedroppered. And actually, when I was inking all these up for this video, I decided to eyedropper uh, three of the pens that I've never eyedropped before. Um, so it's really cool if you are into eyedroppering that uh, you can do that with their pens, with majority of their pens. You just have to be careful because some of their pens are slip cap and some of them are twist. If you are twisting a slip cap fountain pen, you may accidentally slip, like twist off the barrel, which is what you don't want to do when your pen is filled with ink. Um, so being that this is a pocket pen, I can fit quite a lot of ink in here and it's really great for those who like to, uh, like to have a large ink capacity. This pen is called the Model 45. And most of the Franklin Christoph fountain pens um, are numbered. So their different designs have a model number and then they have the the name of the color. They have this model in many different colors. They come out at different times and sometimes they don't repeat. So if you do see a color that's pretty interesting to you, I definitely suggest to get it while you can. This color um, and their black, their classic black are like one of the repeating colors that you will always find in their models. This one is called Ghost. And I have a medium nib. And it's a steel nib. I am using the ink Sailor 162. And that bottle is this one. It is, I think it's 20 ml. Yes, 20 ml bottle and it's dye ink, so it shouldn't, it's not like water soluble. So it will, um, it should resist water. Their steel nibs are smooth, but with like a hint of feedback. They're not overly smooth. And um, this one happens to be the one that I got replaced because the initial one that came with this pen was, um, it wasn't a special nib or anything and it was kind of scratchy. So I replaced it and the model 45 has a number five nib. So it's a smaller nib than um, some of the others. Okay, so my next one is the classic, really, um, really simple design, and it's made of their classic black. It is a really smooth, even going from the cap to the barrel. It's a smooth step down, so it's not sharp at all. Even the edges aren't sharp, and this one also has the logo on the finial. This one is not very large it's also a somewhat smaller size pen and it's a twist and you can post it so i did uh replace the nib on this one which is one of the nice things about franklin christoph is that you can easily remove the nib and get a replacement nib or try a different um nib uh, size and um, they even have like the black nibs and then the steel silver nibs. So this one is a model number 66P and it doesn't have a clip, same as the ghost nib and it's in the classic black.
And as I mentioned before, the classic black is a color that they have in all of their models. My nib size, uh, this is a number six nib and it is in an extra fine. The ink I'm using for this pen is the Iro Shizuku Ama Iro. It is a beautiful shading blue. And this is just a steel, simple steel nib. This one I got because I wanted to try their special ice type of material. Um, this one is a Model 20. I wanted to finally get a pen that had a clip on it because my first two didn't. So I decided for this one. And this is a relatively average size pen. It's not a pocket pen. Here's a comparison between this and the Twisby VAC 700R. And I decided to go a little wild with this one. This is a push cap. I ended up getting a very wide nib. So this is model. Marietta and it is also a number six nib so I can exchange it with the body barrel of the model 66 made of antique glass with a um, red grip like the section now the red I think had a different name which I cannot no longer find on their website so at the time this was like a special edition because of the combination normally they have the model the antique glass all the way through into the section but in this case they didn't and um, at the time, all their model, all their antique glasses were sold out. So I did grab this one. And I think this one sold out pretty quickly at the time. So this nib size, which I forgot to mention, is actually um, a steel 1.5 cc. And I am using the ink Shimmering Seas by Diamine. This is one of my oldest inks that I got from Goulet Pens a long time ago. Shimmering Seas ink. Okay. So this one has a shimmer into gold. And I, you always have to kind of mix it up a little bit before you start writing to try and see that gold. And it's very, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but um, it's very wet. This ink is a really good flowing ink. And I've used this ink actually in an extra fine Twisby and I've left it in there for months and it still works. It didn't clog my fountain pen at all so it's a really good flowing ink that has shimmering in it and um, I really like it I'm glad I still have some of it left I've also I droppered this pen and I really I didn't fill it all the way through because I knew I wouldn't use all this in a, a good timely manner since I've inked up all my pens at once but um, I just put in about half and I really like how it slushes around. And I know it can tell by the way that the ink doesn't necessarily stick to the barrel that it won't be too difficult to clean out. So this is a slip cap and I always get 
confused. I don't have many slip cap fountain pens. This is one of the few ones that I have. Um, yes, I have one more or two more. And I always end up twisting before I pull off. And now that I have this filled like a eyedropper pen, um, it kind of reminds me to slip it off, which is good because there, initially when I did ink it up, I started twisting. And then when you twist this pen, you're pretty much twisting the barrel from the nib. But um, this one is specially designed, their slip caps are specially designed to avoid any cracking in the cap and in the barrel. You feel it more than you hear it. It doesn't snap into place. It's just, it pushes down. Okay, so next I wanted to try something even more unique and different. This is one of my favorite pens from Franklin Christoph, and I used it forever and ever um, until the moment when I lost control of it and lost it. This one is called the Model 25 Eclipse. Cool thing about it that still excites me is the fact that you can take off the cap which is so tiny and small, and it's like, I might lose this thing, but you just place it right under the clip, and that's where it rests. So again, model 25 in the classic black. Now, the only unfortunate thing is that I did not do anything special with this nib. Uh, when I purchased it, so it's just the regular, I think it's the uh, medium size steel. So it's just, it's just kind of mediocre, nothing too special. Um, it's not super smooth, and I think maybe it also has to do with the ink. This ink seems kind of dry to me, um, but this ink is Ferris Wheel Press, Madame Mulberry. I will say that if you do decide to get this pen, make sure you are absolutely sure about the nib because this nib cannot be easily changed from uh, to another nib. You can't just put it in. You would have to um, probably send your fountain pen to back to Franklin Christoph to get it switched out. Okay, so I decided to go with a different pen that was a little bit more interesting. So I ended up getting this one. And to be quite honest with you, I cannot remember the name but it has a little bit of shimmer and it's like silver blue with black and white marbling. It does also have Franklin Christoph on the finial and um, also in the cap. So this one is a twist cap and it does post the difference between this one and my other is that it takes a size five nib and it is called the model 45L. And I wish I could remember the name of this material. They don't have it anymore, but they come out with really fun, unique uh, materials all the time. And uh, the nib here is a broad sig. So I had to double check and I have received some, uh, I think two Masuyama fountain pen nib grinds, but this is actually the broad SIG. And it was 
purchased back in 2020 and this uh this broad is just delicious you can see that it turns down kind of points down just a little um it's not sharp at all and it gives off like the prettiest uh, um color when you have well it the ink in this is such a pretty color that you can actually see it very well in this broad nib so it's the sailor one two three and it's this purple pinkish color and it's just gorgeous it's like purple hints of pink and some green on the edges so it's a sig broad um the color of the body i can't remember and uh this ink is again sailor One, two, three. And it's very juicy. They, this was not the original nib. I actually ended up getting this probably a year later after I got the pen and the pen did come with a nib that just wasn't it. It, I do, if you can get one of their SIG nibs, or I'm pretty sure they're 14 karat nibs. Um, those always seem to work so much better than their steel nibs, in my opinion, because someone else is touching the nibs and um, smoothing it out. They always seem to go better, like actually function better than the original like regular steel nibs that come with the pen. Or at least for my look, that's, that's what I have been experiencing. So, Back to this Model 25 Eclipse in the black. I lost this and I couldn't find it and I was so upset. That was the first time I've lost a pen that was over $100 and it was driving me insane. I couldn't find it. So I ended up getting this one. I wanted to get the black but they didn't have the black in stock at the time. Plus I thought, well, if I ever find the black, I wouldn't want two of the exact same pen color. So I ended up getting this one, which is the Ghost. And the Ghost is more um, uh, a semi-opaque white. And so I got it. And literally weeks after getting this pen, I ended up finding the black pen. And it was exciting, but also kind of like, I was kind of mad at myself that I hid it or I hid it from myself, I guess you could say. That was okay, because I did really like this model. And this one is in the fine, I wanna say it's a Sig Fine. The ink I'm using here is my Ancient Copper. But I am I. Okay, so after that, I felt like this pen was kind of a little too narrow, and that's when I was starting to look for girthier fountain pens because I kept gripping my pens a little bit too tightly. So I got this one, and this is definitely a girthier pen than the 25, and also slightly thicker than even the 45 large. So this one does post and it's actually really lightweight. Um, this is one of the barrels that you can also uh, eyedropper and it would look pretty cool with the semi opaqueness of the barrel. So this one holds a number six nib as you can possibly tell. Let me show you in comparison. This is a five and that's a six. A reason why you may or may not want to pick a certain size nib or a pen that carries only a certain size is because of how close your hand reaches to like the paper. With the size six, I find that my hand doesn't touch the paper, like my knuckles 
won't touch the paper as much as if I were writing with a smaller nib because then my hand is closer to the paper. So um, that's one of the reasons why I do like the comfortable nib, larger nib size. So this one is a model Forty-six. So the forty-five. This is the forty-five large, and this is a forty-five. This is a forty-six, and it's like an extra large uh, number six. So it's forty-six X L V I, and it's in the solid ice. And this one is, um, I really like this barrel and the, I like the straight edges as you may know, because I do like my, um, my sailors with the flat tops. So this has appealed to me, plus it's slightly bigger and girthier and the threads, even though they are at the top of the closer to the nib, they do not get in the way and they are super smooth and comfortable to write on. So the ink I'm using here is my Ferris Wheel Press Mirror Mirror of Moraine. And it's a pretty teal, a little bright, and has this really nice shading to it where the edges are slightly darker. And that brings me to my very last pen. And this one is the largest one I have. So this is the model 19. Okay, so this one is called model 1901 is what the 19 stands for. And the color combination is midnight. Sky, S-E, and the nib is a medium sig, and I think I do want to switch it out and get broad because it would just fit this pen since it's so girthy. I feel like it should be spitting out like more ink and be really juicy. So I might just do that, but I can also switch it out with a current nib that I have that's larger. Um, and the ink I'm using is Amber de Bermain from Herba. Really comfortable, very girthy and still pretty, um, not like overly big. It still fits my hand and um, I really enjoy, enjoy using this one. So that pretty much sums up all of my Franklin Kristoff fountain pens. 
let me know if you have any additional questions. Be aware that they do sell fountain pens that have the clips and some that do not have the clips. So I don't think all their models have clips. Um, there are some models that don't and others that do. And for those that have both, I think you have to just be aware um, when you are purchasing it that you do get the one you want. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.